Hey guys, this is Jessica Brudeau and Matt Jordan over at Reverb, and today we are going to be answering one of your most asked questions, how to get the Tame Impala drum sound. We're going to take you through everything you need to know from mic selection to drum selection, mic placement, and mixing techniques. Let's get into it. <laughs> Okay, you guys, so let's talk about Kevin Parker's drum sound. For context, we're referring to the sound that you're hearing on the earlier Tame Impala records. Kevin was using a 1960s Ludwig in a configuration commonly known as Superbeat, and that was with a 13-inch rack tom, a 16-inch floor tom, and a smaller 20-inch bass drum. So today we're using a 1950s WFL kit with the same sizing and shell construction. For Kevin Snare, he was using a 1960s 5x14 Ludwig Superphonic. Today, we're using a 90s Ludwig Acrolyte with the same sizing and very similar shell construction. Kevin uses a wide variety of cymbals depending on the song and the sound he wants to go for, but he generally chooses smaller, more vintage sounding cymbals. Today, we have a 20 inch K Constantinople and a set of 14 inch K Karope hats. So thicker coated heads Lower tuning and a lot of muffling are key to helping you achieve that really vintage drum sound that you hear on those Tame Impala records. So Kevin usually uses towels and gaff tape to muffle his drums, but today we're using the Big Fat Snare Drum Donut and we have it tuned medium low with the snares being a little bit looser to get that really full sound. So for the toms, we're following that same medium low tuning, except we pitched the resonant heads even lower and then added a lot of moon gels on the top to get that really punchy sound. So for the bass drum, once again, we're keeping our tuning fairly low. We've put a pillow and a t-shirt in here for additional muffling and there is no porthole cut in the front head. The key here is to have a rounded, punchy kick drum sound without a lot of resonance. So there's a lot more to Kevin's drum sound than just the drums themselves, so let's take a deeper look at how to mic it and mix it. All right, so the thing about Tame Impala's drum sound is it's vintage, it's mono, it's tapey, and it's a little bit unconventional. There's actually only four mics on this kit right now, and they're all fairly affordable microphones. So let's start with the kick drum. Kevin Parker has actually been known to make an unconventional choice when it comes to kick drum mics using a Shure SM57. This provides a little bit more of an attack than a traditional kick drum mic and captures a little bit more of that upper mid-range growl. Let's move on to the snare drum. Now this is my favorite part of the sound and it's achieved with two microphones. There's a Sennheiser MD421 on the top of the snare and then a Shure SM58 on the side of the snare placed about four inches back. Now typically you'd see an engineer use a top snare mic and a bottom snare mic. We're using a side and a top in this instance, which is gonna give the snare a little bit more of a vintage feel, and you're gonna hear the ringing of the shell of the snare drum a bit more. We've also loosened up the strainers on the snare a little bit more than we typically have since we're not using that bottom snare mic to get that extra snare sizzle. Now, the fourth microphone that's on this drum kit is a large diaphragm condenser that's placed about five feet above the floor tom. Now, Kevin Parker has been known to use a Rode K2 and a couple other large diaphragm condensers. Uh, we didn't have a Rode K2 available to us at the time, so we ended up using a Shure KSM32. So why would the mono overhead mic be so far over to the floor tom side? A lot of people speculate about this. My personal theory is that that side snare microphone is capturing a lot of the hi-hat. It's capturing a lot of the rack tom. So the overhead is airing more toward the side of the floor tom and the ride cymbal. Another interesting aspect of Kevin Parker's drum sound is that, especially on the earlier records, he was not in a very nice studio. Actually, he was in a bedroom in a house. 
Now we have a nicely treated room here at Reverb with all these sorts of fancy angles and nice absorption. Um, so take this with a grain of salt. You can really get these drum sounds anywhere you want to, even if it's your bedroom. With a four mic drum setup like this one, every microphone really counts. But what you'll hear with the dry signal of these drum mics is that it's really not quite there yet. It's really not quite up to the Tame Impala drum sound standard. So let's get to mixing. Even though the mixing process for these drum sounds is pretty simple, it is very heavy handed, especially when it comes to compression. What we've done first is gone through each individual microphone and applied some subtractive EQ, just so we can drive the compressor on the mono drum bus in the correct way. Let's go through those. So what we did with the kick drum is just take out a little bit of boxiness around 200 Hertz. And then we added a low pass filter around 6K to get rid of a bunch of the cymbal wash since that SM57 was right out in front of the kit and got a lot of cymbals in it. So we're using two snare mics. What we've done on both of them with the EQ is rolled off everything below about 180 Hertz to get rid of some of that unnecessary low end rumbly information. What we did with the snare top mic specifically is we subtracted about 2 dB around 800 Hertz. It was just a frequency that was popping out a little too much in the snare chain. Now, possibly the most important microphone in this drum miking setup is the overhead. We took a lot of time and care up front to make sure we placed it correctly so we could do minimal processing after the fact, but we did end up taking out around 2 dB around 1.3 kilohertz for the final mix. Let's take a listen to what all these drums sound like with just EQ applied and none of the bus compression. Now, let's talk about what makes this drum sound truly special. It's a box called the Shure Level Lock. The Shure Level Lock is not your average drum compressor, originally designed for broadcast applications. It's meant to take things and keep them at a consistent level no matter what, so you can really, really hear the compressor working, and that's possibly the biggest part of this drum sound. So let's talk about how we applied that. What we did was we took the individual microphones, we sent them all to a mono drum bus. Then as a hardware insert within our DAW, we applied the Shured Level Lock. All of the mics go through that one mono compressor and you slam the dickens out of it. So as you can hear, that compressor is really doing most of the tonal work for this drum sound. Now, you can find a Shure Level Lock on Reverb.com, but if you're not interested in the hardware, Sound Toys actually makes a really great software emulation called the Devil Lock that's definitely worth checking out. Even if you're not trying to directly replicate Kevin Parker's drum sound, we hope you learned something from this video that you can apply to your own home recordings. As always, you can find all the gear we use today on Reverb, the mics, and the drums. Please let us know in the comments what other artists you would like to see us cover, and thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.